Literally every single, and you know what's funny? I've heard people, you know, and I've seen people engaging in the Tower God community where it's like, especially a lot of the older fans specifically who are like, you know what? Like, that's funny, man. I get what you're saying. But like, to be honest, my hatred of Rachel has like kind of died down. You know, I've just been, I've been a fan of the series for so long that like my hatred's kind of sizzled out and it's like, yeah, she's a, she's a bitch or, I, you know, she's like, she sucks, but it's like, you know, aren't we all people? You can shut the fuck up because <laughs> hey, wait, that's a triple play. New episodes of Kim Way. Yeah. Open your mind at the first gate. Press play, no need to debate. Hey, wait. Check me out. Look. Clock in, you can catch the hype. Golden Dawn, how we follow the light. Anime like life. Uh, married to it, my wife. Uh. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages? Welcome back to the AOA show. I'm your host, as always, Ian, along with the boy Isaiah. Oh, hi. Oh. And today we're hitting you with part two of our TOG question segment brought by the beautiful people from our Discord. So if you want to have your voice heard, join that community Discord and pose a question after our TOG live streams, and you might just end up on our next video. Make sure you guys did watch the live stream. If you haven't, definitely go check it out. It was a lot of fun. These chapters were super intense, some of the best ones so far. Some would even say the peak, peak Tower of God material here. So. Don't want to miss it. But anyway, Isaiah and I are going to hop into these questions. Being that this is part two, these are not necessarily the most upvoted questions. Some of them are because they just had that many, and we had to incorporate them, obviously. Um, but this was just kind of a chance to bring forward some people that maybe didn't get the spotlight in the last set of questions or just questions that were particularly interesting, etc. So that's how we're going to rock it today. Um, so I will start with the first question here. Just hopping right into it. Comes by Riru. Uh, had to include this one again because uh, Riru was on our last discussion and a lot of other discussions beyond that. But poses great questions, to be honest. And a lot of people upvote it. Um, so congratulations on that. This one had uh, over 20, I'm pretty sure, again. So and there were multiple questions like nice, that. Nice. So anyway, Riru, thank you for the question. Uh, Riru asks, what are your thoughts on the scene where Bomb decides to draw a line and call it his power after realizing that everything he's done so far was a culmination of what others expected of him? Did you like the way SIU has developed Bomb from the beginning of the series up until this crowning moment? Why or why not? I thought this was fantastic. We briefly highlighted this in our previous discussion video. And I thought it was very, it was symbolic, you know, the fact that he did it. It's like, he's drawing his line in the sand. He's making his mark, essentially, right? He's been told from every which way, from back, front, left, right, center, up, down, that you got to do this because of this. You're the son of Arlene. That means you have to go kill Jihad. Fug says, you're bomb. You're gifted with this power. You got to use it to kill Jihad. You got to do this thing. You're my God. You're my God. Do this, do that, et cetera. Bomb is like, I kind of want some self-agency here. And I said it previously in our discussion uh, last time, but this is a fantastic moment for Bomb because he's been very reactionary, as Isaiah highlighted previously. And this is really making him take proactive steps towards what Bomb wants. What does Bomb want? Bomb has to learn how to love himself completely and and take self-agency for things that happen and make his own choices for things that happen instead of being just pushed along by anyone strong enough to do so or just influential enough to do so or just people he feels bad for so he's going to do what they ask him, right? This is a very good moment for Bomb, and I like the way that SIU develops it. Uh, I think this is just the beginning, honestly. I think from here on out is when it's like, this is the story. Um, although ironically, he's probably going to do the thing that everybody asked him to do anyway in beating Jihad. Um, but I guess the, the real important thing is here is that it's because bomb wanted to do it. He's like, I'm not doing it because you told me I'm doing it because I want it to. So whether he's really that or not, we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see, but, uh, excited to see where it goes. Yeah, I mo pretty much agree with everything that was stated before. Um, you know, I don't want to beat that horse too bad. But, yeah, I, I do love that, like, that drawing of the line. That panel is, like, a very symbolic thing where it's like, okay, this here is something that I made. This is something I did. This is something that I'm deciding to do. Um, you know, it's no longer being influenced or led by Fug or, you know, even some of his companions or whatever. This power, this decision to what, on what to use his power for is entirely of Bam's own accord. And, you know, I, like you said, I do think in a way, like for Bam, this is where his story starts, right? Cause it's like a lot of this story that has already started 
has been moving Bam along almost on its own, like you know, by by force. It's been like, all right, Bam, you gotta go, you gotta be here now. So th- these characters are gonna make it so that you're here or you're doing this, or and then you're gonna have to do X Y Z thing because your life depends on it. But this is this is Bam being like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Hold on, I'm the protagonist of the story. Like I, this is my power. I made this thing, and I'm going to use it to do this thing I want, which is very cool. Very cool. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, all right. So the second question comes from Laurel. This is <laughs> this name is literally like Laurel for or at least for me. I'm just like Laray. Laray. Yeah, or Lyray. Laurel. Like wow. wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you for the question. The question is a lot going on, but the biggest mystery in this arc, in in my opinion, still is still Han Sung Yu. I preach that. Uh, how did this regular come across? Uh, such important information surely information like this should be reserved for the fug higher ups even if it if he was with them not just some regular who is han sung Yu, and what is his angle here so yeah i agree because like this nigga bro just <laughs> no stuff like it was one thing like you know people pointed out they were like oh he knew it was bam because and dorsey like literally just said his name was bam all right i'll give you that one but the fact that when they're going through that, um, whatever it is that they're in at that, you know, when when uh, Han Sung, Betis, and Bam, and it, like they get trapped in that thing, and there's that door that they're trying to get out, and and they're like, oh, we need, but Bomb has to be the one to break it. Um, the fact that he breaks it, and and or Bomb breaks the door, and Han Sung's first thought is he's like, is this V? You know, it's like, oh, okay, you like, so you knew V, like knew new V, like that's weird because v was around when like jihad and then were first climbing the tower how the fuck do you know v and then like that coupled with when he um you know in the latest couple of chapters that we just read we learned that the promise he made to eat on specifically stated that somebody not so this was my the the other nail in the coffin for me is that he wasn't even like i heard in this prophecy somebody who can defeat jihad is gonna come to this floor someday it was arlene's son be, like their son is going to come to this floor someday and he's prophesied or you know uh, to be the one to overthrow jihad it's like okay but how do you know that like you are han sung you a regular who climbed this tower and even if you are an affiliate you know like the question states with fug or or you know in some as far as the fug ranking like you're you know you're up there or whatever like this is the data version of han sung I'm still, to be honest, a little confused on like how this whole thing works. Where like if there's if this if the path is works both ways between your data version and you, meaning if you don't speak about the hidden floor after you leave it, your data version still collects memories and stuff that you on the outside obtain, because if, because these data versions seem to refer to themselves on the outside a lot, and I'm like, how would you even like know that? You know what I mean? So. I think, I don't know, he definitely, honestly, one of the biggest mysteries to me, definitely still, and one that I, like, by the time we got to the Bam Jihad fight, I was like, all right, <laughs> well, if, if it reveals itself, it will, I'm done, not that I'm done chasing necessarily, but I just, I just don't know, I don't know, because he seems to have such specific, like, it, it's not, like, roundabout info that he analytically pieced together, and he just made his best educated guess on, because that's what most people could do, right? And it's like, okay, fair enough. He's just got a very analytical mind. Um, but this is above, like, coon braining shit. He knows this stuff. Like, somebody told him or gave him the knowledge. So my thing is, is my thing is, it's a who. Somebody had to have told him this, because there's no way the information he had, he would have come across on his own. He got it from somebody somehow, but then the question begs, if this is data Hansung, he's not leaving the hidden floor. So who who came to the hidden floor and told him that somebody somebody on the hidden floor knew this because nobody who the only people who come to the hidden floor and leave are are like the 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 real versions of the people on the hidden floor right you leave their your data is still stored there so that means that somebody who came to the hidden floor at one point in their journey knew of this yo what if no, that doesn't make any sense because I was going to say, what if V, before he died, came back to the hidden floor? But that doesn't make any sense because then, like, V didn't know that Bomb lived. You know what I mean? As far as he was concerned, Baby was dead. So it wouldn't make sense for him to come back and tell him that. What if What if it was Enryu? Because I'm trying to think the only people who don't have data on the floor are the irregulars and like yeah Yurik does 
But they made a whole point to be like, his data is not supposed to be there. He was an anomaly, an error in the system. And the only, the only other person that prophesized bombs returning was Enryu. Because he tasked, that's why Garam was on the, the floor of death. On his orders, waiting for... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Bro. What if, because we're throwing crazy shit out there, what if Han Sung is actually the leader of Fug in disguise? Like, because oh. they said the name of the leader of Fug, and it's not Han Sung. But, I mean, <laughs> you could use an alias. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, you wouldn't want to, like, proclaim to the world that it's like, here I am. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Like, that's some crazy shit where it's like he's been kind of, like, you know, taking an active role in folks. But then, in but so my only thing with that, though, is that, like, again, if we're talking about the data version, I'm assuming he doesn't become a leader or a head figure of Fug until after he clears the tower, until he becomes a ranker and comes back down, right? Which would mean still his data version wouldn't know anything about that. Unless, no. Unless... Unless he met Arlene. What if he met Arlene, like, as he was going up the tower, she was coming down. Because remember, she had to go, she went, ended up going all the way back outside the tower. Mm -hmm. What if he met her on the way down, and he learned this information from her, and because he's never spoken to anybody about the hidden floor, he still, like I said, he, he doesn't lose memories of the hidden floor, but then vice versa. His data still collects that knowledge. So he acquired the knowledge through himself in a weird way from Arlene that like someday this baby was going to come back to life and this baby was going to be the one that ends Jihad's existence. All I'm saying is they better <laughs> have a thorough, a thorough explanation for who the hell this guy really is. And why what the it, he knows. Yeah. Shit. Why yeah. he knows so much because he knows a lot. He does. He knows a lot and he knows way more than he has, than he should. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Sus. Shit. Sus on yellow. Anyway, moving on to the next question here. We have by SIU the God X Guerrera or Gura. Um, so this is this is a lengthy one. Um it says, consider the four points below. And you're gonna have to scroll a little bit on this one for me because it goes it goes lower. Um there were th three of Jihad wait, 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 there was Jihad's three eye symbol in the cave where bomb was found. Okay. Arlene said that she offered Bomb's body to the outside god. Okay. Han Sung Yu said that a god will send a chosen one in the tower to punish Jihad. Okay. Rachel in season one referred to Hedon as Tower's Fairy and said that she learned about Hedon and the tower from the books or from books, apparently on the outside. So here's the question Do you think those four points are connected somehow? Fan base doesn't have any answers yet, so feel free to theorize. Why did the god on the outside decide to cooperate with Arlene? Do you think he was, or he has his own story in the tower with Jihad? Jihad also says he doesn't know what Bomb really is. And Bomb himself states that he feels like he was born to fulfill someone's desire and that he'll disappear once he accomplishes his task slash destiny. So basically... What the hell is happening? Your personal theory. Ooh. That was just basically like summarized Tower of God. That was yeah, that yeah. that was a very in depth question. Thank you for it. Woo. Yeah, I. Uh, it's all connected for sure. It's definitely all connected f for sure. I think the the three eye thing is something that jihad is that transcends jihad. Right, like Jihad didn't just make up the three eyed thing. Like he acquired the three eyed thing. There's something like symbolic, religious, whatever about that. And Jihad just assumes that mantle. He's like, I have the seed of the king. I'm the chosen one. I have the third eye, etc. Like he didn't just like make it up. And he's like, you know, it'd be really dope if I told everyone I have a third eye. You know what I mean? Like he definitely got that from somewhere. So I think there's a symbolic nature to that beyond that transcends Jihad and has been a part of his past or, or, or big influence on him for sure. So I think that makes sense as to why also maybe the three eyed symbol is in the cave as well, where it's like almost this, like, again, being that it transcends Jihad, it's almost like this hieroglyphical ancient times thing that's there. And it, and it means something where it's like, when we're going to look back at this in retrospect, it's like, Oh, the, the symbol was there, whatever. That's my theory anyway, even though that wasn't really a theory, but um, and it really is sad because it says Arlene said she offered Bomb's body to an outside god, um, and that god will send a chosen one into the tower to punish um, Jihad, and 
that you know bomb thinks that he is this he's carrying out the will of something else which is a really sad theory that like bomb himself isn't bomb you know what i mean like bomb is bomb don't get me wrong but like bomb is not what bomb was supposed to be in the sense that like bomb really did die on that day that jihad killed him and that whatever is in bomb now is like not fully him, you know? And I think that might be an interesting arc or place where the story could yeah. go is being like, okay, bomb, you're not even supposed to have your own self agency in a weird sense. We, I think we said in our last discussion that Jihad is trying to control fate and bomb might be that fate, right? Yeah. In the sense that it's like, like he's supposed body. to destroy him. So like, but even bomb is now swept up in that fate, a fate that he just might not necessarily want to do. So, kind of tying it all together i think this is why the this is why the chapters that we read were very significant for bomb carving his own path drawing that line as it were but yeah i think a really sad direction that this could go is that you know that this god or whatever has kind of just given a piece of itself or has laid dormant you know within this child and kind of resurrected it as almost like a vessel you know to to kind of fulfill whatever role it's supposed to fill and that's it but like bomb has to regain his own self agency, almost like some AI unit that's a, you know, created or some crazy crap. But, um, yeah, <laughs> I think, yeah, I think all the points are connected somehow. And I think there's something that transcends to, to in summation here to wrap it up. I think there's something that transcends Jihad, the 10 families, everyone that came from outside the tower, whether it be something they were trying to escape, whether it be something they were trying to achieve for, maybe someone sent them on that task and said, do this for me. And then Jihad's like, I don't want to go back. So he just, you know, became X thing. I don't know. I think, but I think there's something outside the tower that's like, has its own thing going on and it transcends Jihad in that. But those are my thoughts. I got it. Okay, shoot. I've already written the story. Okay. <laughs> I know how it ends. If it doesn't end this way, to be honest, it's, it's mid in comparison. <laughs> so I think that you're right. I think that Jihad, Arlene, V, Edon, all the 10 family heads, the original people who came to the tower from some other place are part of a different society. They're part of a different world so to speak and this world was run and or ruled by these gods these other gods i think jihad specifically amongst all of the other ones was getting a little too fed up and a little too tired of the level of control that these gods had over their civilization and, and had over their lives specifically and i think he saw this tower as a way out and he maybe even heard of this tower's fairy as a tale, as a way of like, oh, legend has it, if you go to this tower and you meet this fairy, he will bring you to a place where you can become God, which we now know is Jihad's mindset. I think that that three-eye symbol, though, is not Jihad's symbol. I think it's the, the symbol of this God, their original God. I think Jihad, as a way to mock this God and as a way to mock fate, has readapted this symbol as his own symbol. He's like, no, 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 this symbol represents a God, but it does not represent you. I am the God. I am mm -hmm. the one that controls fate. I think that that's why that cave was the the starting base, let's just call it, right? Yeah. Or, or wherever they, you know, are originally from, the people before they started climbing the tower, and that's why the symbol was there, because it's yeah. not Jihad's symbol. It belongs to the original gods outside the tower, and that's why Bam was there, because when Arlene, those are the gods that Arlene comes to to revive Bam. Um, and, and I did, and in a sense, I do think that it then also makes sense, again, connecting all four of these points here, how Arlene offers Bam's body. Arlene knows these guys. They're not like these random unfamiliar. She, she, you know, she was one of the people that agreed to run away from them. So she was like, look, please, I, you know, maybe she, maybe she begged, maybe she pleaded. She was like, look, I know we ran away. I know we gave up on you. I know we lost faith or whatever you want to call it, but like, I'll do anything if you just bring this baby back to life. And again, what we know from like fairy tales and stories and wishes, wording can be a tricky thing, right? Because the God, whether it was vengeful or not, might have been like, okay, I'll give this baby life. You know what I mean? But like, that's not, we can, all, all it takes is slight twisting of those words. And now we don't have, bam, this child's life coming back to this body, but we have a life going into this body, right? So, which, you know, again, if we come down to the bottom of this question here, this idea that bam is not actually himself and that he is sort of the literal physical manifestation of this God's will. And in that sense is bam is a way for the, old gods the original gods to punish jihad right they represent this 
all impending fate that Jihad is so terrified of because it's the one thing that, that ruled and conquered his existence and his life. So for the gods to now imbue their essence or their power or, or, or themselves, whatever, in Bam, and then send him up this tower that Jihad went to to seek refuge and get away from these gods, to send ba- someone like Bam up there and defeat Jihad, is ultimately these gods, A, being like, no, you don't get to control fate, Jihad. You may think you're powerful, but like at the end of the day, you're under our thumb. Like we are the ones that get the final say here, and that's that. And Baal is proof of that. We sent like you thought you could make your own civilization here. We sent ourselves in here, in a sense, which is bomb, um, to show you that all of this is just a facade. Give us back our symbol and like come back. Like, you know what I mean? And, and that that's this Han Sung Yu making this reference, referring to the gods will have will choose somebody to punish jihad i think that is again like that was a saying that the, that that was a you know a saying a prophecy that these gods used to talk you know wh- when all the other people from the outside like spoke to each other about the gods right it was like if you ever disobey these gods if you ever you know maybe maybe even went so far as to be like if you ever speak ill of them or if you ever you know turn your back on them like you will be punished mm. and so again jihad doing something as bold as as not only saying no these gods are wrong and i don't agree with them but turning his back on them and fleeing from them and then taking their symbol and identifying himself as the one true god is about as spitty in the face as you can get in terms of of action to reaction so for them like i said i think it's the ultimate like counter attack or or ultimate uh you know kick in the ball so to speak for them to be like no not only did we prove you wrong but we made this personal. We used the son of the woman you love and the person you hate the most to be the one to do, like, you know what I mean? So I think there's this, like, there's this weird fucked up battle between Jihad and the original civilization of people and the gods that ruled them. Of Like, that's the fight that's going on here. And I think what's, inter- what's going to be interesting now, though, is that if Bam really has what it takes to you know, come into his own and really, like, get a grasp of who he is. Like, I think the arc that we just got out of, in a sense, is, like, the service level of Bam finding out who he is. But if this is the case, this goes a lot deeper than that. Bam, literally, the person Bam thinks he is might not even be Bam. You know what I mean? So I think it would be really cool if while this story is going on, while this battle is going on, this overarching battle between Jihad and these gods, the actual, the, the, the secondary you know, the, the, the fork in the road here is Bam, right? Because if Bam, all, this whole plan works out assuming that these gods can send Bam up this tower and that Bam just does their will and acts on their behalf. But what if he doesn't, right? What if at some point along the road, he truly does claim agency over who he used to be, his original identity? Now we have a true unknown variable, right? We have an actual, you know, unpredictable variant in the story and that now Bam is not bound necessarily by what he wants because even the declaration he makes right when he's like if your will jihad is to you know proclaim yourself a god and use it to to uh you know as an use it as an excuse to hurt and demean and destroy people's lives then my purpose is to stop that right even that declaration Mm -hmm. as pro as a you know as centered and and focused on him as it is doesn't sound like he's saying something he wants to do Right. He's saying, if that's your purpose, my purpose is to stop that. Yeah. But that sounds much more like the gods being like, if that's what you want, the reason this person exists is to thwart that rather than Bam wanting to do something on his own. Mm. So, yeah, that's what that's how I think they're all connected. And wowie, how crazy that would be if even a a fourth of that is true. (laughs) No, that was. Yeah, it's insane. I actually it's kind of interesting. I there are a lot of parallels in this story. Um to the Bible, actually, which is oh, sure. crazy for anyone who's uh, actually a lot of stories are like that. Once you get down to nitty gritties, like a lot of the, I feel like once you start using like gods and stuff like that, you subconsciously pull. Yeah. There, and like, know? it's a great story. So like, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot of derivatives from that, whether people realize it or not, but beyond the point, I think it's interesting because the Bible, there's kind of, it's kind of a similar thing, a falling out as it were, where Lucifer, who is the head of angels, essentially, has supreme rationale and reasoning and says, well, I want my own thing better to rule, rule somewhere else, rule in hell than serve in heaven type thing. And basically gets cast down or leaves, um, with a slew of angels, right. That come down to his level and then they, they do their own thing. Right. And 
So it's interesting because Lucifer, um, his name actually means uh, light or morning star. Now, I do find it interesting that Jihad is gold. He is, uses almost like the sun. He is like this planetary style, whereas Bomb's fighting style was the void, that they're of that that eats, eats away at the light. So I think it's interesting that he, if this theory holds up, that he defects from whatever is going on and kind of takes his angels, as it were, and does his own thing, but for what he seems to be, for what, for reasons, for him, seems to be good reasons, right? And mm-hmm. then what happens is that they have their own falling out later on. Yeah. Um, would be interesting, and also relating Bomb and then Enryu to that of Jesus Christ when he is born um, as, you know, the one that will absolve those of sins and redeem the world in that sense and be kind of the, the driving force behind, you know, eradicating sin. Um in this case, jihad, right? In that in that respect, and Enryu is almost like the messenger of him, like a like a John the Baptist or someone that prophesies the coming of him and guides the way and says, "Here I am." Like this is I almost as if like you know, building the path for him yeah, to yeah, take yeah, yeah. for Bomb to take in order to fulfill whatever that divine duty is. Um, I don't know. I find it interesting to have all yeah, those yeah. parallels at no. that point. Um, because it's going to make for some interesting stuff when everything comes to a head, and mainly because of the fact that I'm curious now, minor spoilers for Attack on Titan in three, two, one, um, how, you know, the end of, like, Attack on Titan, season three, it's like we're dealing with, like, this little microcosm of a thing, and then we realize that, like, we cracked open the can of worms, and it's like, oh, yeah. the whole world's involved, and it's, like, way bigger than anyone would have thought. I do wonder because I feel like stories sometimes have to do this depending on how long they go, unless you just want to end it. Like if we get to Jihad and this is why I keep on, uh, this is why I keep on drilling home, why I'm so damn curious about what Jihad's reasonings are, right? Like what his side of the story is, even if it's wrong, I'm just curious. I wonder if it's going to be like, it's like we got to the top of the tower, but now it's like, it's even bigger than we initially thought. And it's something that has to do with the outside or that last floor or whatever. I'm, I don't know. There's a lot of theories that can bounce around. Which would also be interesting because, you know, I've never read the Bible. But to my understanding, and my vague put together knowledge, um, Lucifer, part of his, like, part of, his, I guess, the initial launching point of, like, how he got to, the, how he came to the conclusion he came to was curiosity, right? Like, he's, he was curious about, like, Earth and its inhabitants and, like, why they did the things they did. Um, and I've, you know, and even if that is, well, even if that is not true, I, I think it's interesting to you if you spin that in Jihad's case, linking back to the fact that Jihad is somebody who loves uh, being an adventurer. He loves this sense of like exploring the unknown, and maybe this life that he had prior to that of subsiding to these gods like wasn't suited for him. He didn't like it because Jihad is somebody who wants to explore. He he, there's a there's a thrill he gets out of like finding out things that nobody else knows about and like exploring things and and traveling. And so I think in a sense it'd be interesting to see if Jihad being the villain of this story, like you said, right now, you know, maybe perhaps the story is to break open later and, and reveal that there's more more cards at play. Jihad is the villain of this story, but the but the main story, the bigger story here, Jihad was just somebody trying to get away from all this. Jihad was somebody who was fed up and who was, you know, who felt suffocated under this rule of the God. Maybe these gods, the only thing we know about these gods is that they were the initiating point for why our, our initial trio climbed the tower to begin, or not trio, uh, our group of people climbed the tower to begin with, and that they basically are using Bomb's body as a way to get back at Jihad. Those are the only things that can more or less be confirmed. So those two things lead me to believe that these gods probably aren't super cool. They're probably not really, like, nice and, and friendly people. I mean, they're not people. But, like, <laughs> uh, you know, my, I guess my point is that, like, my point is that, like, maybe Jihad wasn't off about trying to get away from them. Maybe Jihad running away, like, Jihad, like I said, Jihad might be the villain in this story in the tower, but outside of it, Jihad might have been just another dude trying to escape. That was a wild question. <laughs> <laughs> wild was, ride, woo, wild ride. That was. That? Thank you. Uh, I saw you, the God X, X Guerrero. Guerrero. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Yeah. That was made us think. <laughs> ooga, ooga. Damn. All right. So the next question is by Confuzzled Asian. Thank you for the question. They say, do you guys think that Plantanium and Enryu are forces that Jihad wants to overcome? 
even though he is the king, that does not mean that he is a god. So does Jihad want to be able to create a new adventure that makes the previous journey seem like a walk in the park? Um, I think... I, so I, I, I do think that there is a part of Jihad that wants to either expose of and or get rid of um, forces like Plantanium or fan, fan, Fantanium. Planetarium. Uh, planetarium, <laughs> right, thank you. <laughs> um, or Enryu. Um, because to Jihad, like this question sort of states, that's like they represented the pinnacle of like godly power. Right. And like, again, you know, I, I don't, if we're to use this analogy of like relating it to an actual story, like the Bible, those figures are probably closer to ha like to the abilities of God than Jihad himself would be. Right. Um, you know, if it like, you know, this is all make already making assumptions, but if figures like, you know, Fantanium and Enryu, are already bestowed with powers by the gods. I mean, it, that would also explain, you know, if, if it would explain Bam, it would explain why Bam has this like seemingly even amongst the towers, supernatural abilities, um, that these are powers bestowed by the literal gods from the outside. Ju it, it makes sense that Jihad would see that and maybe even be able to immediately identify it as like, Oh fuck. I, I recognize where that's from or like that they can do that. Uh, I mean, we, <laughs> you know, Jihad is all powerful. Um, at least again, in this tower, but like people get superpowers from looking at Enry. That is some God. That is lit. Uh, you, you asked me to, to define what a godly power was. It would be that it would be somebody who gets superpowers just from being in your presence. Like, so I, I do think that to Jihad, but I do, mm, I do. Sorry. Word bottle. I do think that unlike this question where they're saying they're framing it like Jihad wants to be create a new, he, he's doing it in the sake of creating a new adventure to sort of outdo the previous one he's been on. I think that might've been what the original Jihad wanted. I think this current Jihad though now just sees them as nothing more than a threat. Again, I think this current Jihad has done mu a much 180 on his original personality and everything that the original Jihad liked and admired or that was admirable in his personality, which was his sake, his sense of adventure, you know, this, this this passion that he had, has been warped. And now he sees them as nothing more than a threat. He sees them as this obstacle to overcome because if there's somebody out there that has the actual power of these gods that can overthrow him, that's a threat to him, to his whole empire, to everything he's built here. And again, larger scale, to the notion that Jihad is not the one in control here, that Jihad can't outrun these gods. And if his whole mission here, his whole journey is to do that, is to prove to these gods that they are not the omnipotent beings that they say they are and that they don't have the right to rule over people, which is ironic considering what Jihad's doing now. Um, that would be a direct threat to Jihad. That would be something he would definitely want to, to knock off the table. Mm. Yeah, that uh, that's something that has puzzled me since the inception of the story, particularly Fantanium. Yeah. And Ryu too. I mean, he's like, first of all, he's gorgeous. Second, And you know what's funny is that you say you're like, like, you know he's powerful when, say you're fighting an opponent and you're inadvertently giving your opponent superpowers just by him looking at you, but then you still whoop your opponent's ass. Yeah. That's insane. That's yeah. like, that's the ultimate flex to be like, oh, by the way, when we fight, you're going to unlock abilities to see the future, um, probably grow a third arm, uh, whatever else, doesn't matter. I'm still going to whoop you yeah. into the dirt. You know yeah. what I mean? Peons like, what I can do. <laughs> it's like crazy, right? So like... I can't even imagine what Fantanium is like, dude. If Enry was like that, and apparently people say Fantanium was number one. Yeah. What is he doing? What What is he, she, it doing? You know, that's like, and but that, that begs the question too, because apparently Fantanium has rolled up on Jihad before and been like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. what are you doing? You know, so it's like, but okay, why didn't Fantanium just knock him off his pedestal right there, right? Yeah. If that's the case. There's so many questions here. And Enryu, right, you could say as well, right? Why yeah. why haven't they done that? There's a symbolic reason why Bomb has to be the reason, right? And it's not even just because he's irregular, because so are they, right? Yeah. So they could technically surpass the contract that Jihad has for immortality. So there's something really big going on here, like grand scale style thing where... Either Jihad has to be taught the lesson of a lifetime and they're really going to drag him through the dirt the whole time doing it, or they can't do it because of whatever force is bigger than them. They're like, okay, it has to be this way, that like Bomb has to be the one to do it. For or Fantanium might not even give a shit about anything of that that's going on and is almost like his own ethereal 
force of nature being that just kind of like does his own thing. You know what I mean? Just like kind of goes around the tower and whatever. (laughs) But like, that's the thing. If he rolled up on Jihad and did what he did, like he's got to have some stake in this in some way, shape or form. So I don't know like what the lesson is here. I all, I feel like they're literally, this is a one, a big learning lesson for Jihad. (laughs) Like how they're going through where it's like, sit down. Let me tell you how this works real quick. But yeah, I don't know. I I don't even know if Jihad is like, this is a force that I want to overcome. Because getting back to my Fantanian point, if he just came in and just like bitch slapped Jihad around, I think Jihad's like arrogant, but he's not dumb in the sense that it's like, I don't think Jihad even thinks that there's a, a way to get over Fantanium, like, or, or whatever. Like, I think he just understands that Fantanium, it doesn't actually want to destroy Jihad or what, like maybe he's like a prophet or like kind of like Enryu who has come and prophesied, spelled out his doom as the king, right? When the king oversteps his boundaries and said, this is, you know, this is this, that, and the third, I am omnipotent. I have all these things. And then there's generally a prophet or someone that comes in and says, no, you're not. And here's why, you know what I mean? And you're going to be shown why you're not. And it's going to be a really rude awakening but I'm not going to be the one to do it. You know, like that, that, that whole dynamic just really puzzles me. And I'm just very curious to know what their end game is here, especially Fantanium, because we know so little about him besides the fact that he rolled up on Jihad. It just raises so many more questions and it, yeah. than it answers. <laughs> I think, so what's interesting is I do think, I don't know. I, I think there might be something to be said for the fact that Jihad, you know, again, isn't stupid, but you know, this is the dude who, looked at a god, you know, whoever this these outside gods that were ruling or or a part of, let's just say, if anything, the the former civilization on the outside mm-hmm. and was like, no, I like you guys aren't. I'm like I, I I can get above this stuff. I don't think even if he met someone like Fantania like remember the fight in his fight with or or uh Data Jihad's fight with Bam, uh Edon has this this line where he's talking to himself and he states he's like now, remember, Bomb, the thing you have to be careful about Jihad isn't that once you're fighting him, um, you like, you know, make sure you watch his, basically, like, his emotional state. Because you'll be fighting him, and there'll be a moment where he recognizes your power. And he'll be like, oh, this might be a little bit of a challenge. But that will only make him more angry. Mm, so true. I think, if anything, Jihad, if he met Fantanium, and Fantanium was just like, oh, you think? And bitch slapped him and, like, left. He's been, like, eternally pissed off by that encounter. Fair, and fair. is now more motivated to be like, Come hell or high water, I will prove to that thing that I am better, that I will beat it. Because I mm. like I, I honestly think in a weird way, and, and not to say this as it's like dumbing down his character, but that he's a pretty sore loser. That he does not take being defeated, um, especially by something that clean, you know, that represents the gods from the ad that he originally left, uh, wouldn't take that well. You know, yeah, and he would yeah. be very much be like, I don't care if I if it takes me the rest of my immortal life. Um I'm going I'm to find a way to beat him. Yeah, yeah. The only thing is, like, now, because Jihad is so different from what we've seen, that's, that, yeah. like, that, that could be the only thing where it's, like, Jihad... Because that's the thing now. Fantanium might... What I was saying before, he might not really have a stake in it. Like, the, we don't know why he came and did that yeah, to Jihad. That's the biggest Might outlier. have been to prove a point. Might have been yeah. for whatever. He might have told him something and then I wonder, left. You think it, I wonder... Do you think it was, like... Because we know Tower God loves these tests. Um, it Like, he he's testing Jihad, Fantanium. Like, he came up there... And he knows that he could clearly beat Jihad. But in a weird, twisted way, much like Jihad, he was like, all right. Like, he saw something. He saw, he didn't, like, strength aside, what he saw in Jihad was potential. Like, he saw that this guy opposed the gods outside and has done something, you know? He hasn't become, let's say, someone who's on the level maybe of the actual gods on the outside, but that he has the potential to defy those gods. Mm. And maybe in that, Plantanium was like, okay, if you really think, or Fantanium, I call him Plantanium. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, he was like, okay, I'm going to give you the opportunity to put your money where your mouth is. If you think you have what it takes to be a god, to best these things that besto- maybe bestowed him with his power or he is a, a separate entity from whatever, um, I'm going to give you a chance to prove it. Like show me that you can you can acquire the power to rival these gods, and you know I won't smite. And again, this is all assuming that he does have some personal stake in this, which he might not. Um, fair enough, but I think I, I think to be honest, I think that's the best way to do it, at least personally. Just because I think if he's got no stake in this, it's kind of like what the why the fuck did he come in the tower to begin with? Other than like I was just window shopping. Um, 
you know, you could, I guess you could argue that it's like, oh, he's got like a, a separate agenda, but it's like, my guy, we kind of have like the whole story over he, here. You know what he could remind me of? <laughs> here we, like, um, have you ever seen uh, Watchmen? Mm-hmm. The Watchmen? Um, Dr. Manhattan. Dr. Manhattan. Almost reminds me of that, where it's okay. like, he is so beyond okay. anything that's going on, where it's like, he understands where it's like his understanding of something is just so beyond that of like human experience that in the, in that movie, in that, in that series, you don't even know whether to consider him a hero or a villain, right? In Mm. a lot of senses, because he's just so beyond that. He's a literal God in that sense where it's like, I don't know if Fantanium is that because, you know, he didn't do anything to Jihad when he rolled up. So it's like, I don't know if stake in it is the right word because I feel like if he had stake, he'd do something about it. Right. And if he has the power to do it, it would have been done. So it's like, I wonder if he's almost just like letting things play out as they need to be and just kind of being like, okay, well, this is the most logical decision here or not. Or like, I kind of don't care because I'm just so above that. I don't, I don't know. I just like that character to me that we've never seen Mm. is just like, uh, to me has been one of the biggest questions since we start, since they literally refer, I think Yuri references him Mm -hmm. or Evan in like frame three or whatever. I've been like, who is that guy? That's yeah. who I want to know. And like, what is his deal? Now, you know? supposedly, and somebody in the comments, please leave this down in the comments so that we can reference it. Fantanium is actually from another story. Like Tower God ties into, or at least uses that character. Um, it is a reference to another story that supposedly oh. is like a weird prequel, at least of Fantanium specifically, of that character. Now, I don't know how much of that character of Fantanium from this other story Tower of God brought in. I don't know. Like I, it could be SIU just used it as reference to make his version of Fantanium, but supposedly, and again, please people in the comments, you know, keep me, you know, correct me if I'm how much of this is right or wrong, but I've heard that Fantanium as a character and, and either what his general character is or what his, his purpose is or what he can do even is borrowed, f- either borrowed from, pulled from or like a lit- like literally crossed over as in it, like canonically it links to another story. Like there's another story out there that uses this Fantanium and it's like it is described as the prequel events. Like this, the prior story doesn't describe because Tower God didn't exist yet, but like SIU used that story as the prequel to define, to you know, to define Fantanium, oh, which would. would be dope because then we could find the story, read it, and maybe even get a little bit of context on Fantanium so oh. that we're not just like, maybe he's Dr. Manhattan, maybe yeah. he's a homeless guy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he's ghost. The guy who's with Rachel? For the <laughs> oh, my God. What um, the hell, man? But, yeah, so, again, please, if anybody knows, because I've, I've seen, like, talk in our Discord about this, um, if anybody knows what that name of the story is or if how much of that is true, please let me know because I'm – very curious now actually to to look at that story literally and be like okay what does this story say about this about fantanium yeah Um, that sheds a lot of light on things i I did not i did not know that was even a a thing so i'm very curious to know because i want to know about this character but i guess to answer the question the last part even though he's the king meaning jihad does that mean he is a he's not a god so does jihad want to be able to create a new adventure that makes the previous journey seem like a walk in the park i don't think so personally um i think that Jihad, I said this in the last discussion, has now done a 180 in that he wants, instead of facing the unknown fearlessly and trying to conquer it and becomes and make something out of it, it's like he thinks there he knows all there is to know now. And obviously he's incorrect in that statement, but he does truly believe that he's like, everything that I know is all I have to know and all anyone needs to know. Um, and so like I'm going to control fate. I'm going to do my thing. I don't want to face the unknown anymore because there is no, no unknown. I know it, even though he does know it. He's like, he's suppressing it, mm-hmm. you know? And he's like, and no one else needs to go face that unknown because that's going to require change and growth. And that means that I might not be a part of it anymore. And like, I already have all this shit locked down. You know, it's very fascistic way of thinking. He, he knows all there is to know. So I don't think he's trying to intentionally make new adventures for himself because it's like, oh, I'm bored. You know, yeah. it's like, I think at this point, he's like, I need to maintain the status quo, whatever the yeah. cost is. And that's kind of coming full circle. Why I don't, why I don't think that he's incredibly gung ho about like waging some sort of war 
against Fantanium or Enryu in the sense that if he knows anything about anything and if they are stronger than him, it's just going to... He's got Fug below him. He's got, you know, discontent among some people in the tower. There, He's got so many enemies already. And if Fantanium rolled up on him and didn't do anything the first time, I think he's just like, I'm going to do, I'm yeah. doing my own thing. Like We're I'm cool. not launching an assault <laughs> yeah. at this guy unless I know I could win. Right. You yeah, know, that yeah. would be my thing. But yeah. um, anyway... Great no, question again. Fantastic, yeah. Seriously. Uh, so we're going to move on to the last question here, question five, and it comes by Vladimir. Thank you so much for the question, Vladimir. Killing it again. This was another one that had yeah, like 20 yeah. plus upvotes. Um, oh, this actually had the most, but it was kind of a gag question. But I'm like, okay, we'll incorporate it in this one. So, how much do you hate Rachel now that she's killed Kuhn? Isaiah, the floor is yours. Um, I think it is a hilarious prank that uh, people think that Kuhn is killed. Or, or that people think Kuhn, or Kuhn killed Rachel. Um, I, and I do love specifically that everybody refers to it as like, yeah, he's dead. Like, like, what do you guys think about his death? Why aren't you talking about his death? And it's like, he's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> like he's just, he, I, I, I know. If we, if it, all right, if I've learned two things from all the blog post videos that we've done about SIU. One, that man needs to be in a hospital. And two, he has way too much appreciation and respect for this story and the characters in it to basically pseudo kill Kuhn off screen. Like that just, that's just not, if Kuhn were to die, it would probably a top na any national tragedy that's occurred. Um, <laughs> but B would be done with some manner of respect higher than Rachel put an invisible bomb in his heart and blew him up off screen. Like that's just not, that's not Pog. It's not Pog. It's not even, it, it's just not, it just, it's, it's it's a prank. It's a prank. It's a, it's a funny prank, but it's a prank. Um, but to answer the the, the question here, um, more than I thought I could. I mean, every, like, literally every single... And you know what's funny? I've heard people, you know, and I've seen people engaging in the Tower God community where it's like, especially a lot of the older fans specifically, who are like, you know what? Like, that's funny, man. I get what you're saying. But like, to be honest, my hatred of Rachel has like kind of died down. You know, I've just been, I've been a fan of the series for so long that like, my hatred's kind of sizzled out and it's like, yeah, she's a, she's a bitch or I, you know, she's like, she sucks, but it's like, you know, aren't we all people? You can shut the fuck up because <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, every single time, every single time that like this little seed like tries to penetrate my brain and that seed is the seed of like, let's actually critically think about Rachel's behavior. She pulls some fake ass hoe snake shit like this, bro. <laughs> every time, every single time I'm like, okay, Rachel, but is there more to what you're doing? She does some sideways shit like this. And I'm like, you bitch, what are you, why, why? It's, it, it's clearly so like personal and it's so, the only thing it does is like get her vendetta across, which has been clear about her character and consistent all the way since we've known her. All she's ever wanted to do is get her way. She's just this fucking spoiled brat that wants so bad to be the main part of this story and has been eternally pissed that she's not because she's fat, ugly, and stupid <laughs> <laughs> and powerless, and she hates that. And instead of doing any sort of self-improvement and thinking introspectively about it, is trying to snipe every other person that seems to have any semblance of talent or, or good looks or whatever. And it's like, you are doing the wrong thing. You are objectively going about what you want the wrong way. Because I promise you, Rachel, even if you don't get, even if you don't even get to like the upper echelon of the top of this towers, you a hundred percent, a hundred percent will get more with honey than vinegar. A, a hundred times over. There is no way you're telling me that by bitch slapping, stabbing, stealing, and killing niggas, you're going to get higher up in this tower than if you just make a fucking real friend and, like, come to terms with yourself. Bam's doing it. If Bam's, like, might not even be a real person. If Bam can do it, the fuck if you can't do it, don't give me this quitter attitude of, like, I hate my, my like, I hate myself and therefore I, I got to hate everybody else. How about you just can start learning to love yourself and love other niggas and guess what? Those other niggas will then love you and you all can go up the tower together. You want to see the stars? You need to make some fucking friends first. <sighs> I hate her. <laughs> that was fantastic. Oh, man, it was really good. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, Kuhn's not dead. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I don't. I genuinely, to to mirror Isaiah's point there, I don't. That just seems that just seems crazy to me that he would just actually ax him like that, just like so out of the blue, you know, or it's like not some big intricate plan thing going awry, or he throws himself in front of bomb, or like some wild thing, you know. Um, but he could let on that he's dead for a while. And Kuhn might not be in the story for a while. Like, there might be a thing where it's like he dies and then he maybe comes back way later. Like, something happens and it's like we have a couple arcs here, like maybe all the way to like season three or something like that. I don't know how much more is left, but of season two. And he's not there for a while. And then he, you know, does his own thing. Because one thing we've seen Kuhn be able to do, he's a really good salesperson and recruiter <laughs> when it comes to getting really strong teammates. So he is clearly the capable, and he's really strong himself, obviously, but he definitely has the capabilities to get a, a well thought out and strong team in order to do what he has to do. Um, he's very crafty. So I think that he can manage the tower by himself. Hell, he's already got past kind of one of the harder parts in the sense that the train, well, they're about to get off the train, um, that and the, uh, the floor of death, I mean, he survived those and, and did whatever he had to do. So I think, like, you know, he's yeah. going to ride it out. He might even he might even do it, uh, like, to spite Rachel, right? He might make it seem like he's dead, and Rachel's all up on her high horse, like, oh, I killed Coon, I suck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she say that last part. That's just ad-libbing. Uh, but, like, then he makes... But then, like, you know what I mean? It's all part of this this scheme to get back at her. And then just when she least expects it, when maybe, like, she's about to eat it or she's, like, you know, at her look, like, then Kuhn is, like, it was me. Like, yeah. you know, because Kuhn, it, like you said, two things we know is, A, he's incredibly resourceful, incredibly crafty, incredibly powerful, and he knows how to hold a grudge. <laughs> like, he has been going after Rachel basically since the BAM thing. Like, you know, who really think about it from frame one because he had suspicions about her from that moment from after Bam left the story initially. But once she attacked his team, once they they killed those other members and, and she nicks Dan's legs that because he even has the moment when he tells her that in the uh, the dollar show when they're doing the sweet fish thing. He's like this like you made this personal and I'm going to make it my mission to take every single thing you want away from you. And I think now that he she tried to take his life, um, it don't get no more personal than that. <laughs> like that's he's like. Oh, you wanted a war. Okay. I'm going to give you one. You know, it's like, you, I, I think, I think Kuhn is not dead. And I think she pissed off probably one of the worst people to make your enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Interesting stuff going forward. But anyway, those are the questions posed. That is our discussion. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you're throwing a like on this video, subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell. If you are new here, so you don't miss any future discussions, make sure you guys are catching our live read through of these chapters on our AOA reacts channel. The link is in the description down below. You want to subscribe to that for all of our live reactions and live read throughs, tower of God, solo leveling, etc. Uh, also, make sure you guys are sharing with your friends because the conversation starts with us, but it certainly doesn't end here. It then gets passed to you. Um, which is why you want to comment your thoughts down below as well. Let us know what you thought of our discussion, these questions posed, how you would answer them. If our theories were fun to listen to or just plain ridiculous, whatever. <laughs> I know we had some fun going over them. These, these were some pretty thought-provoking questions, and it can be tough with a story like this because there is so much info, and I feel like every little tidbit of info you get, you're, that, you're in the dark on 12 other things. So it's like a lot of times you have – such a lack of information. So like speculating is kind of all you can do in yeah. weird, you know, you can only get like, but um, anyway, so we had fun. Hopefully you guys did too. A big shout out to our patrons, especially our acolytes of anime, Stoic and Nathan. Thank you very much for your support. Couldn't do it without you guys. And uh, we have our comment of the video here, comment of the day. This one comes by Michael Nuaze. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Oh, Apologies if I didn't. Um, but, Michael says, uh, well, actually, the, the question was, what was Wang Nan's nickname yeah. in the beginning? Uh, the answer is Prince of the Red Light District and Future King. And just for you guys watching this, we took another one from the uh, the Tower of God um, discussion we did prior mm -hmm. because we recorded both of these on the same day. So the first discussion is not out yet. So that's why we didn't grab one from the. Yes, yeah. it's been a packed week. But uh, anyway, so Michael says for the comment. I agree with Gavin. Oh, come on. No, I'm just kidding. I agree with Gavin in the sense that I wouldn't like his spear. This is referring to Kuhn. Uh, spear upgrade to replace all of his previous skills. But I know SIU won't do that. 
I want to see more complex ways that lighthouses can be used as basically supercomputers in this tower, besides as portable walls, freezing people, and teleportation. Yeah, so just um, in case there was any misconception going around, uh, Isaiah and I, in being happy that he got a spear, um, did not mean that we wanted to eradicate all other abilities, i.e. his lighthouse abilities, that Kuhn had already. We just thought it was a cool upgrade and uh, add-on to his pre-existing abilities. And Kuhn will still be Kuhn, no matter what he does, whether he's throwing a spear or typing on a lighthouse or teleporting or using beta and all that kind of stuff. I'm very excited now to see how he incorporates both of them actually into his fighting style. And I think this was something that was definitely needed for Kuhn as a character because the further we go up this tower and we see something in his character arc, he's afraid he's slowing Bomb down. He's definitely going to need some sort of physical power-up in order to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with people that just can't be out done. I can't be outsmarted or it's just not working in that way. Sometimes you have to fight your way out of a situation. So Kuhn being able to utilize that now, especially on his own, um, is something that is really interesting. But that, which the main point here is, does not mean that it eradicates all of his prior abilities and knowledge. Yeah. Kuhn is still and I mean, Kuhn. it's a literal trope in the story that I was saying to you before where like, Nobody sticks with one position forever, right? Everybody has, like, their main position and then something else that they can do um, or have an affinity towards. It would make it would be weird for somebody of the Kuhn family, to be honest, to not have some efficiency or use of the spear bear because that's kind of, like, their thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it was, it was never like, oh, man, like, finally we can ditch the lighthouse gang because that was, it was getting kind of weak. Um, it's like, oh, cool, now we have something to incorporate with the lighthouse uh, or the light bearer. Uh, you know, position. So it just makes him even doper. Yeah, for sure. Coon will still be Coon. Big hearts there. You guys couldn't see that because the mic was in the way. <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, folks, that is our discussion. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much question. for listening. We have a question. Duh. I'm going to get used to this eventually. What's our question? <laughs> Isaiah, what do you got? Our question for this episode is what is the name of Jihad's sword? Ooh, that's a good one, because I already forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us in the comments, because I'll check the wiki. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> anyway, so answer the question correctly, obviously. We'll know that you watched this entire video, and then state your comment just like Michael did here, and we might just read it in our next Tower of God discussion. But until next time, we will catch you all on the flip. Peace. Peace. Ninjas are samurais, blaze of the cool eyes. Find me in the leaf of the cloud, screaming out Bankai. We just some ghouls though, who like seeing parts fly.